Hey kids, welcome to Stylus Rumble Network Literacy. I want to just talk about network literacy for a little while and just get you guys familiar with the node view and take away a little bit of the fear there because I get a lot of animators who just, they're afraid of the node view. And even if you only want to do character animation, the node view is your friend, I promise. It's going to help you animate faster if you need to piggyback these two characters or just make some layering changes. You've got props or anything that you need to add to your character. Knowing how this works is going to help you do that faster, more efficiently, and it's going to make you a faster animator because you're not clunking around with the technical stuff. Also, if you want to like branch out a little bit into compositing or rigging, then you're going to easily be able to start navigating through that world. And it also translates into other programs because stuff like Nuke, Unreal Engine, Maya, they all use nodes in different ways through compositing or for texturing, stuff like that. So this is not just valuable as a Tomb Boom learning exercise. It's valuable overall as an animator in life because it's it translates into a lot of different places so don't be afraid just start start small the network is your friend and we're just gonna build up over time i might go over a lot of the stuff that i've gone through in the rigging course again but i mean the video the sound quality is not so good in a lot of those so some of them need to be redone anyway so let's start what is the node view and i might say network view or node view interchangeably because the name has changed over the years and i'm an old soul so i've been doing this for a while so if i say network view i mean the node view okay <laughs> just because I, I promise i'm going to do it at least three times i'm going to say that wrong so the node view all it is is a visual representation of all the information in your scene so if you're coming from another place, maybe you're coming from Flash, you're familiar with the, the timeline. That feels really safe for you. And you know that the top is going to be on in the front and that things as they go down are going to start moving back. Well, in the network view, it works exactly the same way, except we're working left to right. So anything that's on the left is going to be on the top. And you can see if I click on blue here, this guy, this guy, same guy. Okay, this one here, he's the one in the middle. If I click here, it's going to be the same guy. And it works works from left to right, front to back. Your main bread and butter are going to be these composites, drawings, and pegs. That's the foundation of all of the characters and the animation in Harmony. So everything in here is color-coded. And not only that, but even these ports are color-coded. A lot of people don't realize that. So if I select this, it's asking for a transformation. You can see it's green. The peg is green. It wants a peg. This guy's blue. Blue means picture. So the drawing is blue. Pictures come out blue. So if I have a blue out the bottom, it's going to give me drawing information. If I look at my group here, I can see the blue is picture coming out the bottom. Green is animation. So I can I can add a peg up here. Oop. And I can plug that in here and it's going to animate anything that's connected through there. Organization within the node view is done with groups. So this character here is it within this group. The second character has his own group and you can open up the group through here. And this is when the animators start getting scared. They're like, oh no, this is spaghetti. Things have gotten a little bit better over the years because they've implemented these mat systems, right? So if you wanted to add one of those, if you like sub organizing, I could select, for example, the character's eye. Boop. The blues in here are the eye images. So here's the image part and then the green parts are the movement parts so it is possible to animate on the drawings but by keeping things on the green nodes on your pegs and keeping it separately it helps keep things organized and when you're shuffling things around on the timeline it's a little bit easier to keep everything separated that way right so let's select this here and up in the top left corner every single one of these has its own option box you can see that your timeline has one your camera has one every single one. This one is going to give you all the options for the node view. So if you ever want to know something about your the view that you're looking at, that's where you're going to find the options for it. Within this drop down menu, I have an option called insert and I can put a backdrop. Boop. So whatever I have selected, it's going to get one of these backdrops and I can change the color. So now I can also add a title. I 
and I can leave myself some text. So blah, 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 blah. It's going to be in here. So oftentimes when we start getting these big, powerful rigs, things that are getting really complicated, the rigging department will actually leave notes inside your rig for you. So if this eye has some particular function that's a little bit outside what you'd normally expect, they can make you a little note or you can make yourself a note and remind yourself about something that's happening in there. It's super useful. Now, if you move this, it's going to move everything inside. If I pull this guy out like this, I can resize it and it's not going to move anything in size. And then once it's highlighted, you can take it out from behind these guys by using that triangle down the bottom. Boop. Super useful items, All right? So just as we go left to right from top to bottom, the stuff at the top of your hierarchy is going to control everything below it. This is how we start creating uh, more complex rigs where things move the things below it. So this leg, for example, boop, the upper leg is going to move the whole thing. And then you can move down the hierarchy to the lower leg. And within blue and many characters, we also have sub pegs. All right. So here's the, the top one is going to move the whole leg. But then the upper leg itself has an independent peg in case we want to change the shape of it without affecting anything below it. And this is really useful if you're trying to do an imitation of foreshortening with a rig like this. You can sneaky snake it down a little bit and change the shape of it without having to counter it your lower leg. So it's doing sub pegs like this is something that you'll see very often within a character. And it's also very useful to be in the node view because when you're selecting things, a lot of animators will shift select things or they'll box select things like this. And then they're selecting the drawings. And in this case, they cannot take any animation information. So it's gonna just bump it up to the next peg. And in this case, it's these sub pegs. So now if I'm animating, what I'm doing is I'm animating on these sub pegs. So it's not going to move the pivot point of the lower leg. See, so now my pivot point is off. And when I rotate it, this is broken. So people coming out of other software who feel like shift selecting or box selecting like this is good. They then end up having a broken lower leg or they'll shift select a bunch of stuff again. Boop. So now the, the foot peg is nowhere near the ankle. The lower leg group is nowhere near the knee. And so you're just moving things farther away from where they need to be. The better way to animate in harmony if you have a hierarchy character is to use the topmost peg at all times. So by keeping your net view, even if you're selecting out of your, your character window, your camera window, you can hit, say, the lower leg and then hit B, 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 B. And that's going to walk you up the chain. And by keeping your node view open, you can hit O on your keyboard and that'll center on your selection. So now you can see which peg you've actually selected. If you box select, it highlights all of these things down here. So you know that you're using sub pegs. And if you hierarchy up, B, 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 it's going to bring you up to your knee. And then when you B, B up to your knee, your pivot points in the spot where you want it to be. Right. So always animating from the top peg down is really, really helpful. And knowing which peg you're animating on is really helpful. So by looking at your visual display all the time, getting that habit in, you're going to help yourself out. You're selecting shift, selecting things up here, or say you want to move both the character's shoulders. What people will do, maybe they'll be B, B up to the shoulder. And then they want to move this shoulder at the same time to get a shrug. And then they'll shift select. Boop, boop, boop. So let's go over here to our arms. And they're in a nice little green box. You can see I'm selected on the top peg over here and the sub pegs over here because all these drawings are the ones that are highlighted. So now if I move the arms, boop, I can just move them over here. This guy, BB, all of his stuff works. BB, this guy, BB is broken. The pivot point is broken. So if you notice that your pivot points are just dashing all over the place and they're not really, they should be, make sure that you're working from the top down in your hierarchy. It will save you a lot of heartache. And you're also going to get any of your tweens that you're, you're utilizing. If you're using any auto tweens, they're going to work. They're not going to get just like float around. You're not going to have an arm that suddenly just starts going like, we can you're like, why? It's, it's because you're using these lower pegs. So 
hang out in here. Take a little peek at what's going on. It will help you. Another good thing within here is it's going to help you for copying templates. So when I created my blue template, I'm all done with it. I'm going to take my character and I want to put it in my downloads folder because it's convenient to work out of there. So what I'm going to do is right click on my download down here. So I'm in my library downloads, right click, and I'm going to write to modify because all of these are locked by default. So you're going to want to unlock it to be able to add anything in here. And I promise I forgot this step a million times. So make a post-it note if you're the type of person that forgets and can't figure out why you can't save your templates because it's probably locked. All right, so copy, paste, there you go. You got your new template. Okay, blue saved in here. And if I bring in a new blue, boop, I can just drop them into my network, my node view. Uh -huh, I did it. And then I can plug it in. So I can plug it in behind or above, boop, add a peg and slide them over. So see how easy it is to work out of here? Like there's lots of hot keys. Control P is going to give you a nice little peg. Control P, Control Compute P. You're going to chain your pegs up. That's super cool. You can isolate things. So if you got your two blues here, but you want them uh, separated for some reason, you can c create another composite. So this is just like a little organizational tool. And you can put this guy over here on one comp this guy over here on another composite and they're going to make sure that they stay isolated. So now the characters are going to pass over one another, but if they didn't have those, then you can see some of their parts are breaking through some are not. So I do have a episode about composites, but I'm going to go over that a little bit more just with, like I said, I want to improve the sound quality of some of my older videos. That's a little bit just about the basics of it. I'm going to over the next little while start, bringing in new nodes and modules uh, and talking about how you, they are used together. Um, but I just want to assure you that like the, the basics of it carry through to everything. So even the particle effects, you start looking at the stuff, feeling a little bit overwhelmed with the complexity of it. We've got some sort of crazy sparkle vortex and you look in there and it looks really scary. The basics of the network view, the node view, are the same within here. You got, you see, the, they even left us some little notes. So they're talking about how different things work and they're explaining about the baker, what's this baker do, about the visualizer, sprite emitter. That's all just when this bubble vortex, lots of little useful notes in here. And each of these are color coded again. So the purple is always particle visualizer, particle baker, the particle system composite. So this is just a composite, kind of like our other composite. It's a little bit of a different color. You can see these guys are blue, dark blue. They're asking to go to a dark blue node. This guy's asking for dark blue. You can click on it and it says it needs a system composite. Do you have one? I don't know, maybe you don't. This one's asking for purple. This one's asking for yellow. So all of this stuff, once you get in there and you start digging around and taking the time to play with it, it's very user friendly. It, it really starts to make sense and just building it up a little bit at a time, it's going to really save you a lot of time. So if you have specific questions about the node view in particular, please leave them down below. Which notes do you want me to go over in particular? The rigging playlist, I do have a playlist save of all my rigging videos. They do start with the very basics and go over stuff in here. And I talk about how the composites work and stuff. So I highly recommend if you can't wait for some better sound quality to pop over there. They're, I mean, you can understand me. It's just, I'm using an old microphone. So be brave, my friends. Venture into the unknown world of the node view. It will save you time and, and it will make you a happy animator. I promise. So like, share, subscribe, all the things internet people ask you to do. And I will see you next time.